All right, so what we're going to work on today is we're going to start taking a little bit more of a look at the appendicular skeleton. So if we're looking at the skeleton here, the appendicular skeleton is going to be really the appendages of the body. So if we're looking at this, it would be something, the clavicle, the scapula are considered part of this, and then it would be kind of those bones and both upper limbs like this, as well as the lower limbs, something like that, and the same thing on the other side. So it does not include the ribs, the vertebrae, the sternum, the head, the skull, any of the skull bones, as well as the sacrum and coccyx would all be part of that axial skeleton. The appendicular skeleton is really the, the limbs as well as how the limbs connect to that axial skeleton. So to start with, we're going to do kind of the upper arm here first. So if we start looking at some of these ones here, we have the clavicle right here. We can isolate that. And you can kind of see the clavicle is not particularly crazy here. You don't need to know a lot on the clavicle. You just need to know what is the sternal end and what's called the acrimonial end. The acrimonial end is going to be the part that connects with the acromion of the scapula. So it's going to be that this end right here. Where if you look at the sternal end, much flatter surface you can see there. That would be the sternal end of the clavicle. Uh, outside of that, the other bones that are kind of part of this shoulder girdle, if we go back to this, we have the scapula next. If we isolate the scapula, you can kind of see here is the scapula. And we have a few different things we need to know on the scapula as well. So the scapula... You need to know the acromion and the coracoid process. The chromium is this one right here. It is taking and making the other part of that shoulder girdle, that pelvic girdle, um, excuse me, pectoral girdle of the arm. Then you have the coracoid process. It is that one right there. I mean, if you look at the acromion and with the clavicle where those come together that's going to be the top of your shoulder bone and then the last note last thing here is the actual ball and socket of this ball and socket joint that we'll be talking with in the next little bit of stuff here that is that glenoid fossa it is that articulating surface where it's actually the head of the humerus would be connecting with that so that is kind of giving you those two parts there so the rest of what we need to look at here is going to be the humerus, the ulna, the radius, and then kind of the wrist and the hands. So if we go back out to the skeleton here, we can kind of just grab the upper limb now. I'm going to isolate all this and just kind of point out the bones for a second. So on these ones here, we've seen pretty much, you can, you can see the connection right there. That was what I was talking about already with the acromion and the chromial end of the clavicle. But you can kind of see those are those two parts here of the that pectoral girdle. You can see next is the humerus right here. You have the ulna. If you actually look at the end of the radius right here, it's round. So that this whole bone right here is the radius. You then have your carpals. The palm bones right here are the metacarpals. And then kind of all of those right there are what we refer to as phalanges. And you can talk about kind of the proximal, middle, and distal phalanges on the fingers. Proximal and distal, no middle on the thumb. So that's kind of showing you kind of the overall here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go and look at each of these. So if we go and look at the humerus, and we'll isolate that now. So here's the humerus, uh, sometimes nicknamed the funny bone. Uh, and if we start looking at this one here, you're going to have a few different things to talk about. So what I want to kind of do here is get the pen out a little bit. If we go down to the distal end of it first, these are to me some of the easier ones here. You are going to have what's called the olecranon fossa. 
You look around fossa is this hole right there. This is where the end of your ulna goes in when you straighten your arm. You are then going to have what is referred to as, on this one, the trochlea, which is right here. So it's kind of as making up that hinge joint. It's kind of the hot dog going into the bun of that hinge joint. You'll see when we look at the ulna, the other half of that. And outside of that, you have the lateral epicondyle, which is going to be that region right there. Uh, a lot of times we talk about this area being a condyle, uh, just a area that articulates on that one. So medial epicondyle is going to be that side right here. So that is the stuff on the distal end. On the more proximal end, if we bring it down to here, uh, let's look at some of the rest of this stuff here. So the easy thing to point out that is the head of the humerus. We also, on the list I am giving you, you have what's called the greater tubercle. It is kind of, the greater tubercle is going to be that raised region right here. You then have, besides that, the deltoid tuberosity. I'm going to see if we can see it that well on this one. Deltoid tuberosity is kind of a... doesn't show that well on this one. It's kind of a raised ridge, a rough area. It's going right along here. It's actually where your deltoid muscle attaches in. And then there's actually a little notch right here, a little fossa that goes down the side right here. But those, that is the different structures you need to know on the humerus. To me, kind of the toughest one of the upper limbs. Uh, so if we take this back out, I'll isolate that for a second. We'll now take it down here and look at each of these other ones. So if we isolate the ulna, this is the ulna. If we look at the end of it here, if we're looking at the ulna, that is the olecranon process. Or the olecranon. Uh, the little space in here where that trochlea goes, that is that trochlear notch, kind of is like the hot dog bun. If you think about the trochlea, the trochlear kind of ridge on that one being, uh, where was it on the other one there? The trochlea on the humerus, it's kind of the hot dog going into the bun right here. Outside of that, the other rest of these are down in the end. So if we kind of take the pen off a second here, and we're going to go now and look at the other end of this. That is the stylate process. And the other part of this. I think that's actually all that's on the list, if I'm remembering correctly. If not, I'll go back and find whatever else we need to. Uh, I think that's all that's on the list, though. And then the last one here of these bones, this is going to be the radius. So if you isolate out the radius, this one, certain parts of this are really easy. That's the head. Also part of the reason it gets its name, you look at it, it's kind of a circle. Radius is part of a circle. So that was pretty easy here. You have the styloid process, which is down on this end. Again, on the other side here, that would be the styloid process right there. And then you have what is called the radial tuberosity. And again, some of these tuberosities are not, oh, this one's actually pretty easy to see. If you look right here, that, oh, sorry, bad arrow. If you look right there, that is the radial tuberosity, that ridge right there. And if I rotate it, you can see it kind of sticks out a little bit. But that is the radial tuberosity. So those are those ones. Uh, really, the rest of this, if we go down to the hand, if you actually kind of look at all the hand here, I generally, if we zoom in on this, 
I need you to know that all these are carpals. There's eight of them. They actually do all have names. I'm not requiring you to know all the names, but those are the carpals. They, if you actually go through these, you can see they do have names. So I'm not expecting to know all those names, but they all do have names, just so you're aware. Uh, outside of that, you have these one, two, three, four, five metacarpals. So those palm bones and the main bones, main bone of the thumb, at the base of the thumb, the meaty part of the thumb. Then we start going across here. These would be all phalanges. So those are the phalanges right there. That would be the proximal phalanges, distal phalanges right there. And then you can see on the fingers, you have the middle phalange on the four fingers, but not on the thumb. And really, that's what you need to know for the upper limbs. So that kind of works you through the list on the upper limbs. Uh, what I'll do on this last one of these is we will do uh, the lower limbs, and then that is really all the different bones.